Ray Berger issued a challenge to the members of the Outlaw Speed Shop Diecast Renegades and Hoodlums Facebook page. Ray issued the challenge to do a mashup between a bone shaker and a Chevy Nomad. Well, I had a bone shaker that uh, I had already stolen the wheels off of <laughs> for something else. It had real riders and I took them for another project and I happened to have a little Chevy Nomad sitting around. So, uh, the challenge sounded interesting. Ray uh, has a Facebook page, DZ's Custom Diecast Garage. He's also known as Dice Zero, so that's the DZ. Be sure and check it out. I'll try to put a link down in the description of the video so you can find it a little easier. So, uh, getting on with this build, I wasn't quite sure what direction I was going to go. I had stolen the wheels off the bone shaker, so it was already in pieces. That was easy. Uh, it had a metal base, which would work to my advantage and disadvantage. Sometimes when you're doing these mashups, it's a lot easier having a plastic base because then you can cut the two pieces down to size pretty easily. But in this case, what I ended up doing, the metal base didn't really get in my way. It did uh, make it a little interesting because the, the bone shaker only has one post on this one. The back end hooks in. So... I, I was checking it out, trying to figure out what I was going to do. I kind of had an idea, but I wasn't sure. I lined the two bodies up. I decided I wanted to keep the entire bone shaker chassis because, like I said, it was metal. So based upon that, that made the decision as to where I was going to cut the Nomad. Taking a look at it, I could see that the back end of the Nomad if I cut it right, would fit over the bed of the bone shaker. And interestingly, it would let me keep all the detail on the inside of the bone shaker. So in a way, it, it couldn't have worked out any better for me. So I used the Tamiya tape. I, I really love using the Tamiya tape for all kinds of things, not just masking. <laughs> But uh, for giving me a good straight line to cut. So I'm still eyeballing it again to make sure. Yeah, that'll fit. Fortunately, the bodies were uh, comparably sized. So there you go. Got out the jeweler saw. You know, if there's two things that uh, I seem to love the most about this hobby, it's the jeweler saw and JB Weld. And I get to use both of them in this build. It doesn't get any better than this. <laughs> so uh, yeah, a lot of these sections, this, this ended up being quite a long video. So some of these sections I've had to speed up quite a bit. Some of them are up to three times the normal speed. and Most of them are two times the normal speed. There was a lot of time involved basically getting these pieces to fit together, stay together, and uh, look good together. See, so, yeah, I don't cut that quickly. I'd be snapping blades right and left. I have to say that uh, my blades are lasting longer than they used to. I guess I'm figuring out how to do this. It used to be that I couldn't help but snap a blade on every project. And uh, this blade has lasted me at least through three so far. So and it's not that they're expensive. When, when I bought this saw, I got it off Amazon for like 14, 15 bucks. And as I recall, it came with 12 dozen blades or like 144 blades. And I've gone through probably, if I had to guess, a good 20 of those. One thing that's nice is when you do break the blade, you just adjust the saw and you use that little tiny scrap that's left to keep cutting. So there you see the part I'm going to put on the bone shaker. 
and uh, the back end of the Nomad has a post on it. And so there I'm fitting it. And I, it there's a few little rubbing issues inside. So I have to kind of uh, trim up that post on the Nomad back end. But I'll be damned if that thing didn't look pretty good on there, just eyeballing it. So got out the Dremel tool. Yes, those of you who don't believe that I ever use a Dremel tool, I do. <laughs> I don't use it well. Some of you make all your cuts with it, make all your trims with it, and it amazes the hell out of me because, I don't know, I have a hard time with it, but I don't use it all that often, and so the more I use it, I'll probably get better with it. But there I'm using the drum sander blade or attachment to it there uh, to basically rub down a big chunk of that post because it's basically in my way. I do leave a portion of it because I'm going to attach the bumper or use that as an attaching point for the Nomad bumper that I do want to keep. Otherwise, that back end would look really weird hanging off there. You gotta love the looks of the back of the Nomad. It's, it's such a classic look. So basically, I get this thing. I, I ended up trimming up some areas so that Nomad back end would fit over the bone shaker back end a little better. And then I end up using this. I still had the chrome interior in it. I'm not sure why that was pretty stupid of me at the time, but I was uh, trying to trim up some areas on it as well so that the two bodies would attach properly and to uh, rough it up a little bit so that the JB weld would really hold a little bit better. And that, that's all I'm doing here. None of that is seen, none, none of the outside of the bed in the final product because of how the bed goes over it. I did want to be able to see that uh, tank and the battery in the back of the bone shaker when this was done. That was important to me. I wanted that detail to still be there. So I'm just kind of roughing it up and cleaning some areas up. And then it's time to fit the two pieces together. So what I do on a lot of these builds, I'll tack the pieces together with super glue just to make sure they're where I want them to be if I do it and they aren't lined up properly, I can easily break it apart. I, I don't put much when I'm doing this. It truly is just to tack it together. And as you can see, it, it's not uh, holding very quickly for me. But I'm getting it lined up, and then I use an accelerant. And instantly it dries the super glue. Can't beat that accelerant. It saves you so many times. So I checked it out, and uh, it's the way I wanted it to be. I didn't need to change it in any way. So once again, this uh, video is not sponsored in any way, shape, or form by JB Weld or any of its affiliates. They have shown absolutely no interest in sponsoring this channel. However, I still use their stuff. Yep, there we go. It's almost like a shameless plug for the company if they were kicking back something to me, which they're not. I mean, geez, at least, I don't know, a couple tubes of JB Weld or something. You can't beat this stuff, though. It works fantastically. So, so what I'm doing now is I'm filling in the gap between the outside of the bone shaker bed and the inside of the Nomad body that I'm putting on the back. I'm filling all of that in so that when you look in, it, basically it fills it all in but and, and it becomes super strong. But at the same time, what I'm doing is I'm filling in any gaps so that when you look at this from the top, you look in the windows of the Nomad bed, uh, back of the Nomad, and there you see me flattening it out. 
and you're going to look in those windows and you're actually going to be seeing the inside of the bone shaker bed. And it's a good fit. It's a really good fit. It, the windows look a little thick, but not horribly so, not, not oddly so. It couldn't have worked out any better um, for what I was hoping to do. So I add more JB Weld. And I did put a little too much in the wheel well area. And I do end up trimming that a little later in the video. There I'm trying to smooth it out smooth it out and between JB Weld and uh, then once that had cured and it sanded it down, and you'll see me going through the process here shortly. It, it was a lot of filing and cleaning and trimming. It was a combination of the JB Weld and then Bondo Spot Putty to make it really nice and smooth. And so uh, I'm going to take you through some of the cleanup of the body here in a few seconds. I did steal the wheels for this thing off uh, Beetle's van. Got the real riders off of that. Because of their size, I, like I said, I do need to clean up some area in the wheel wells where there was a little too much Bondo Spot, or not Bondo Spot Putty, but JB Weld. And so now at a super accelerated pace, I'm going to take you through some of the cleanup. Once I had all the spot putty cleaned up, uh, I went back to trying to fit the wheels. I did have to file down some of that metal chassis because the front wheels, the uh, front and back set of wheels were not a direct drop in. It would have been great if they were. The front ones fit a little snug, not horribly so, so I just filed those down. The uh, pads on both sides of the wheels. Once I filed those down enough, the, the front set did just drop in. I ended up crazy gluing those in place. Super glue, excuse me. <laughs> Old habits. And uh, same on the back. I ended up uh, doing them a little differently. I They were not long enough... Uh, but I ended up grinding down inside the wheel wells to give myself a little more room. And I did have to split the axle and glue it in place onto the base. Did not need to use axle tubes on here. It worked fine without them. Uh, the, the front obviously was a drop in, but the back I didn't have to. Uh, but it did take a little grinding. This little attachment on the Dremel tool 
I had never used it before for this situation. And the shape of it, you see how it has a bevel to it and then a flat area. That darn thing worked out great. Now I've painted it lime ice, Tester's Extreme Lacquer Lime Ice, and uh, added some details. There you can see how I've uh, glued the wheels in place. Yeah, I kind of jumped along pretty quickly here. This video was getting way too long. So uh, <laughs> you'll, you'll see more of the paint job later, don't worry. Here, this god-awful looking thing is... I was detailing the interior. I wanted to keep the shiny chrome front end of the engine and the pipes and the skull. But I wanted to put a matte coat over the back. So I basically masked off, used paper towel, hit the back with a matte clear, um, started detailing it, went over it with a matte clear again. It deadens that silver. It deadens that chrome. It makes it more look just like a, a silver, almost aluminum kind of look to it. And then it also helps the detailing stick a little bit better. And yeah, that, uh, the brass look on the tank. I, I don't know why I always seem to do the tanks on bone shakers in that brass color. I, I just love it. That is the Sharpie pin. That's the brass colored one. And, uh, then I'm just using the uh, Citadel Black for a lot of the detail. I wanted to cover that back up. I did not spray the base black. I left it the metal color. But this back end of the bone shaker was looking odd hanging out underneath. So I hit that with black. As I mentioned earlier, I wanted the bumper off the Nomad. So I busted out the jeweler saw again rip through that plastic as it does. Yes, I know those of you who use a Dremel tool, that thing would have cut through it like butter. Like a hot knife through butter. And this is like a dull knife through, I don't know, salami. <laughs> but anyhow, <laughs> I uh, touched it up a little bit and then I used super glue to attach it to the back end. And there you see the post Po remaining post from the back of the Nomad. That's the post that I ground down a little bit earlier. Uh, I left enough of it so then I could attach the bumper to it and then tacked it on the ends as well. So I should be coming into the shot here with it in a second. Um, oh yeah, here we go. There's the baking soda. So I used that after I had attached the bumper with the super glue there. I used the baking soda to make it a little bit stronger. And I just put it on the post area. So now it's time to throw this puppy together. At this point, we really only have three pieces. We have the body. The bumper's already attached there. You can see that. Uh, drop in the chrome interior that's already been detailed. And it's an oddly snug fit on the, the metal-based bone shaker for some reason. I'm not sure why. Or the plastic-based ones don't seem like it's as snug. Maybe it's just uh, the ones I happen to have. And then you hook in that back end, drop it on there, and uh, tighten it down. I had drilled and tapped it earlier. I did not use a self-tapping screw on this one. On this one, I actually did tap this. And I am using a washer as well on this. There you go. I really, uh, the lime ice, I love that color. But then anybody who's watched my videos knows I love that color. Uh, the gloss over that is the same Tester's Extreme Lacquer. I believe it's wet look is how they describe it, but it's their clear that goes with that same uh, same uh, Extreme Lacquer series that they have with the lime ice. And they do have some other colors in there. That uh, There's a blue, there's an orange. So here's where we started. 
an already uh, stripped down <laughs> wheelless bone shaker and the Nomad. Take the two and put them together, see what happens. I'd like to thank Ray Berger again for issuing this challenge. This was a lot of fun. Be sure and check out his Facebook page, Dice Zero. There's the end result. I'm happy with this little guy. Now you can see there's the bone shaker tank inside of there. If you look carefully. And you see how the windows are thicker than normal, but it still works. At least I think so. <laughs> Give you a little bit different angle on it here. Love how the wheels fit in here. Now you can get a look at the tank there too. You can kind of see that. How the bumper fit. Detail the back, detail the tail lights. I did drill out the pipes. Just some little details. So, uh, hope you like this build. There's some glamour shots coming up. Everybody stay safe and healthy out there. Catch you in the next one.